Well, what have we learned this year? Good idea that we didn't fire Mike Tomlin. It was a good idea that we didn't trade George Pickens just a few weeks ago. It was a good idea that we didn't bench Najee Harris, despite my strong convictions that we should. It was a good idea to fire Matt Canada. I think that was one where you're, you're talking about like negativity or doing like a firing or shaking things up. Fire Tomlin, trade Pickens, trade Najee or bench Najee. Like those three. Yeah, good good thing we didn't do those. But the one shakeup or the firing that did work out was firing Matt Canada. So that was a good thing. Like you just look at what happened since we got rid of Canada. The offense in the games that were without Mitch Trubisky. We we got to forget those Mitch Trubisky games. The picket game against Cincy, 400 plus yards on offense. First game that we did that in what, 50, our last 50 tries. So that was a positive. Kenny gets hurt, halftime, Cardinals game. Like, wh how are we grading that one? But then the three games with Mason Rudolph, back-to-back 30-point -back games, and then we put up 17 against the Ravens in a monsoon. So the four games without Mr. Trubisky and without Matt Canada, offense looking up, positive. I guess another thing we could say we learned was Mason Rudolph is the best quarterback for this 2023 Steelers team. I thought it was Kenny. I really did. And I'm not writing Kenny off. You guys know that. But for this season, which is why we should still roll with two going into the playoffs, Mason Rudolph's the guy. He is. Had the best two games as a Steelers quarterback over the last two seasons that we've seen over the last two seasons in the Cincy game and the Seattle game. Like, we haven't seen Kenny do that. Kenny's been banged up too much. It's unfortunate. And I guess last thing, we know this, but this was a reminder or a learning lesson for the rest of the league, specifically the Jacksonville Jaguars. Don't mess with the terrible towels, bro. How about that game yesterday? Jaguars-Titans. I thought for a minute we were going to get that tie on Saturday Night Football. It was looking close. Texans-Colts, it was within a one-score game pretty much the whole time. And then... The one kicker, the, the kicker for, who was it? The Texans. He missed the extra point, and then that just threw the tie out the window. But then our next hope was the 1 o'clock game for the Sunday slate, Jaguars-Titans, and we got what we needed. And it was looking really good early on because the Titans went up two scores early. Lawrence was throwing the picks all over the place. One wasn't his fault, hit off Ingram's hands, but the other one, I don't know, man. He was thrown in, into a whole nother zip code, uh, just way off from the intended receiver. So, yeah, Titans go up two scores, looking good. But then the Titans punter tries to throw the game away almost. Right before halftime, all you got to do is catch the snap and punt the ball. There's only like 20 seconds left, and then you're going to go into halftime up to two scores. But, no, he decides to fumble the snap and give the Jaguars a free three points with a field goal. So it's a one-score game, only eight points. But Derrick Henry, man, he wanted to go out a winner in his potentially last game as a Tennessee Titan. He went absolutely off because the first series, coming out of halftime, he runs one off for like 75 yards, Titans punch one in for a touchdown. And that was pretty much it. They just held on because you could tell the Jaguars had the more talented quarterback, had the more talented team. They were fighting to come back, but they just kept making mistakes, kept doing stupid stuff. I mean, it came down to the end where they got the ball two, three minutes left. Trevor Lawrence tosses one up. Calvin Ridley just goes right off of his fingertips. fingertips. And that was that. That was that. A few more incompletions. Fourth down, didn't convert. Game over. Steelers in the playoffs. But it all stemmed from that Jaguar safety disrespecting the terrible towel at Heinz Field going all the way back to the middle of the season when the Jaguars beat us. It's like, bro, cool. You won this little battle. You won this little victory right now. But 
you didn't win the war. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, but he did. He didn't learn from Lendell White in the past when he disrespected the towel. Titans get booted from the playoffs. Steelers win the Super Bowl. And then also TJ Hushmanzada in 05 when they beat us in the regular season. Disrespects the towel, wipes off his cleats with it. Bengals lose to us in the wild card. We end up going on to win the Super Bowl. So, yeah, don't mess with the terrible towel. And the Steelers, because of it, are in the playoffs. So thank you, Jacksonville. Thank you, Jacksonville. You helped us out a couple years ago in Big Ben's last season, 2021, get into the playoffs by winning and pulling off an upset against the Indianapolis Colts. Fast forward to 2023, you help us by choking against the Titans and losing the game. So thumbs up. And credit to Mike Vrabel, credit to Derrick Henry, Tannehill for not being so terrible like he wasn't amazing but he made some decent plays no thank you to the titans punter for almost selling it uh but how about the sunday night game then though we had everything locked up all it came down to was who it was who we were going to play like the outcome of bills dolphins was just going to determine whether or not we go on the road to the Bills, or we go on the road against the Chiefs, or if it ended in a tie, which we all know is very unlikely, uh, we'd be going to Miami. How are you guys feeling about that? What were you guys' rooting interest? Because my first reaction, my knee-jerk reaction, was just, ball don't lie. However this plays out, it plays out. I don't care. I'm just happy we're in the playoffs. The Chiefs and the Bills are both vulnerable teams at this point. I like how we're playing. I like how the Steelers are doing things. We could take our approach and go on the road and win games. Like, there's no doubt about it. We're running the football really well. Mason's playing good. The defense has been solid, but is only going to get healthier once this wild card round of the playoffs hits. Minka coming back. Casey coming back. Then I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'll lean Bills if I had to pick. I'll lean Bills because the Bills, from my standpoint, I think they're more banged up than Kansas City. And they're not as proven as Kansas City. Kansas City, like, they're a battle-tested team. They're, they're a championship type of team. Mahomes knows what it takes. Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. Josh Allen, the Bills, they haven't done that. I get it. The Bills are a hot team right now, but so are the Steelers. I think the Bills have the worst defense versus Kansas City. Both teams have an elite quarterback, but Kansas City has the more elite quarterback. Bills' weapons a little bit better, but I like our defense. I think our defense is cooking right now and is going to be cooking even more. Unfortunately, TJ Watts out, but I think our defensive backs can handle what the Bills got on offense. So, yeah, I, I was leaning Bills. I was like, all right. Give me the bill smoke. Win this game. We'll, we'll go up to Orchard Park. We'll get this dub. Ultimately, I did just was happy. I was happy with either or. Chiefs or Bills, whatever it was. I'm just so ecstatic we're in the playoffs. That really is what it comes down to. But if I was leaning one way for that Sunday night game, I wanted the Bills. Because what, what I'm saying and why I'm why I'm saying like ball don't lie. However it goes, however it goes, if we got to go on the road to KC, if we got to go on the road to Buffalo, you got to go through the gauntlet anyway to get to ultimately where you want to get to, and that's the Super Bowl. And if you look at this playoff bracket, there's a path, man. There's a path. Why can't we go on the road three times and win these games? Every team in the AFC – is vulnerable. And I wasn't even planning on talking about this type of stuff right now, but you look at it. I, I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself, essentially. We'll just take it a game at a time because that's been our approach these last three weeks. Like our backs have been up against the wall, seven and seven. It's just like, bro, we, we just got to take it a game at a time. We got three tough games ahead of us with the Bengals, the Seahawks, and then also the Ravens on the road. We just got to win one at a time. So ultimately, that's what we got to do in the playoffs, right? That's how the mindset's got to be. But I look at this bracket, and 
Every team is vulnerable. Every team can be beat. Bills, you even saw last night. I know they're on this winning streak, but they put up 21 points against the banged-up Dolphins defense, and seven of them came off a punt return. Josh Allen, very turnover prone. Dolphins, they don't look right. I, I don't. I think they're going to get bounced week one, or wild card round right here, first game of the playoffs against the Chiefs. I think they're getting bounced. Uh, but Chiefs, we've seen them all year, man. They're losing to teams like the Broncos, the Raiders. Mahomes don't look right. Like, he don't look like his best self. But I do think that goes hand-in-hand hand with him having lesser weapons this year. I don't think he's got any receivers he could trust. Their defense is good, but the offense has not been the same. Cleveland, it's Cleveland. Division opponent. We went one and one against them this year. Should have beat them the second time realistically. Texans, all right, cool. We had a rough game against them, but they've also had their fair share of losses this year. Like, they're not unbeatable or anything. Close game against the Colts. I don't think the Colts are that good. So, yeah, I mean, you look at across the board, not one team is head and shoulders above the other. You, We can all agree the Ravens had the best regular season. But they're also beatable. We swept them in the regular season. I know the most recent one was against their backups. But like the Browns, you know, if you have that standpoint from a Steelers fan, you have that perspective from a Steelers fan, it's like, bro, neither of those teams are like all that. We weren't 5-1 and one in the division. I think we had the best record in the division. So, man, like we beat Bills. We go on the road against the Ravens. I get it. We'll be underdogs, but let's not act like the Steelers can't come out of that with the dub. NFC? Looks cool. I, that's the one thing I will say about the playoffs right now. I feel like this is a really exciting time. Really exciting time because all these teams, all these quarterbacks for all these teams have their stories still being written for their careers. Like, it's just starting. There's so much left out there. Whereas in the past, over the past, like, you know, 15 years, 20 years, we knew about Big Ben, the Steelers. You knew about Brady and the Patriots, Drew Brees, the Saints, Aaron Rodgers, the Packers, Russell Wilson, Seahawks. Like, all these dudes, you knew were going to perform in the playoffs. All these dudes were going to get their teams right. You're always going to have a chance with those type of dudes at the helm, having franchise quarterbacks like that, playoff-tested guys. You look at these teams right now, Matt Stafford and Patrick Mahomes, the only two dudes that have won Super Bowls. For their respective teams. That's it. It's like any team could beat any team. And I don't think anyone would be surprised. That's what makes this so exciting. I think this is one of the more exciting playoffs in the last 15, 20 years. Just based off of the uncertainty. Just based off the potential parity. Because when you had that quarterback play that we've had in the past with Hall of Fame legends like Ben, Brady, Breeze. Like, you, I don't know. You you had this feeling like, okay, we at least know this team's going to beat that team. And we know what the divisional round's going to look like, probably the AFC Championship. I, I even forgot Peyton Manning. So, like, my excitement comes from not necessarily the quality of play from these teams, but just the uncertainty of, like, who knows what to expect. There's no reason why the Steelers can't go on a run here and make the Super Bowl. There's no reason. If we play like we've played over these last three games, we are a contender. There's no doubt. And I think every team can say that. Every team's best game can beat any one of these teams when you're talking about each individual matchup. Would you be surprised if the Packers beat the Cowboys, the Rams beat the Lions, the Buccaneers beat the Eagles? Would you be surprised? Same thing on the AFC side. Would you be surprised at any upset? I would not. I guess the Niners, if a team upset the Niners, maybe you'd say that's a little bit of a surprise in the division round. But then once you get to the NFC Championship, uh, any of these teams could beat the Niners, especially them coming off of two wins to get to the NFC Championship. I'm excited for the playoffs, man. I really am. We're a team that's deserving. I feel like we are one of the best seven teams in the AFC at this point with how we're playing. We're one of the hotter teams in the league. So good thing we got in. What's crazy is, remember when they changed the rule from 
going from six teams, getting into the playoffs for each conference up to seven. I was against the rule. I was like, man, six is perfect. It's like the perfect scarcity. You bump it up to seven. Like, who knows what type of quality team you're going to be getting in there. Meanwhile, two of the last three years, we've gotten in because of the new rule and being the seventh seed. And what's funny is I think during the whole Tomlin tenure, you know, there's like three or four times we missed the playoffs. I think if the seven seed rule was in play, we would have made it all those years. So literally, if the seven seed rule was enacted, let's say back in 2000, Mike Tomlin Steelers would have made the playoffs for every single year that he was a head coach. That would have been crazy. That would have been a stat for you. I know he's got the whole 17 straight non-losing season stats, but <laughs> that one would be pretty funny. Uh, let me check in with you guys real quick before I uh, keep moving on with this stream. See what you guys are saying. But uh, yeah, dude, what a day yesterday. What a day. We were on both the Jaguars pack and also the Ravens pack. Two packs for one day. T. Williams, 421. How you doing, Deke? Tuning in. Bills won five on the bounce, but they have not won comfy really in any of those. One of them they did, right? One of them. But no, I'm with you 100%. And that goes back to my point of like why I'm cool with going up against the Bills or why I leaned wanting to go up against the Bills more whenever I was watching in the Sunday night game. I'm like, yeah, they've won games. And that counts for something. It does. They've been winning ugly. They've been figuring out ways to win. And that counts for something for sure. But let's not act like they're blowing teams out and – they're above us by, you know, the 10th degree. But what's crazy is if you look at the odds right now, you look at the line, they got us as, I think, nine and a half dogs. Okay. Tell me you haven't watched the Steelers play these last three games without telling me you haven't watched the Steelers play these last three games. Like, bro, okay. Sleep on the Steelers all you want. Sleep on the Steelers all you want. But we are playing some pretty damn good football right now. Mason Rudolph, this is the best quarterback play we've seen from a Steelers quarterback in the last two years. He's throwing the ball down the field, but he's also taking care of it. Literally threw for 90%, and that was a big math error on the last stream. 18 for 20 is 90%, not 95%. So my bad on that. But he set a, didn't he set a record for a Steelers quarterback for that many attempts? Best completion percentage of all time. Shout out to Mason. Shout out to two. Uh, but, yeah, the Bills barely beat the Chargers with Easton Stick as their quarterback. Uh, yesterday, it was a close one against Miami. Give them credit. They won. But if that punt return doesn't happen, scores 14-14. I don't think Miami's all that. I don't think Tua's all that. You, you know my stance on Tua. Uh, who was the game before that, though? Am I missing? Oh, yeah, the Patriots. Patriots. They snuck out of that Patriots game. Should have lost that one. Chiefs, if Kadarius Tony isn't over the line, are the Bills even in the playoffs? So there's a lot of factors there. People are thinking, like, Bills are the hottest team in the league. Fine, like, you could say that technically because they've won, like, last five or six in a row. But Steelers are a hot team, too. Steelers are a hot team, too. Sleep on the Steelers all you want. That's all I'm saying. That's fine. Whatever. Whatever. At this point, I'm just going to let it be. I'm just going to let it be. I got the same mindset that we've had over these last three weeks. I'm just taking a game at a time. That's all. Game at a time. I think we know what we have here in Pittsburgh. I think we know what we got, right? I got to call them confidence. I like the brand of football we're playing. And we're getting Minka back. We're getting Casey back. Getting that help in the secondary. I wouldn't even rule out TJ Watt playing this game. <laughs> As crazy as it sounds. T. Williams 412 or 421 says, we just got to keep it close and think we will. Then anything can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. C. Miller 61 says, it'll be a good game. Steeler fan 523 said he'd rather go to KC. C. Miller 61 uh, seconds that and says, KC would be better with our DBs. Yeah, that, that would have been the advantage. If we did play the Chiefs, I think we'd match up better against their receivers. But they, I don't know, Mahomes, 
Mahomes in the playoffs, man. That's tough. It's just tough. Like he's that guy right now. Um, that would have been the advantage for sure. But I think, dude, I think we can handle the Bills receivers. Why can't we? JPJ on digs. And then you figure it out with the other guys. Gabe Davis went down with an injury yesterday. He's he might be questionable. I don't I don't know how much he was banged up or how severe it is. But they also lost a couple other guys on defense. They lost Rasul Douglas. That was the cornerback they picked up from the Packers. And they lost, I think it's their best inside linebacker right now. Lost him for the game. I, again, I don't know how long they're going to be out. I don't know if they're going to miss the wild card game. But that's on top of a bunch of the other injuries that they've suffered throughout the year. Their difference maker is Josh Allen. Like, we can't deny it. He's great. He is. But he has been very turnover prone this year. And we have been getting turnovers. We've been capitalizing on those opportunities. Steeler fan 532. How well will we travel this weekend as fans? Nation repping. Hopefully pretty good. Short travel, like three and a half hours from Pittsburgh. But it's not necessarily just about the Steeler fans that are in Pittsburgh. Steeler Nation's across America. It's across the nation. So, yeah, who knows? Hopefully pretty good. Hopefully pretty good. Charlie Watson says we are thriving for sure. Um, what do I want to get into? I, I kind of wanted to talk about the playoff bracket a little bit more. I'll say something briefly. One of my takeaways whenever I looked at the bracket, the AFC side makes sense whenever you go back to the beginning of the season. If you if you were to tell me, like, these teams make it, this makes sense. You got three AFC North teams. AFC North going into this season was considered the best division in football. And as we see how it played out, it was. This was the first time since 1970 that four teams in the same division all finished with a winning record. And if you even want to go back further, it's the first time since like the 1930s that all teams in a division finished with a winning record. The reason why you got to skip the 1970s to go back to that 1930s stats is because in the 1970s, Yes, four teams did have a winning record in that division. I think it was the NFC East, but that division had a total of five teams. So for all teams in a division to finish with a winning record, you got to go back to the 1930s. That's crazy. That is crazy. But three teams from the AFC North make it. You got – I. you know what? I'm sorry. The Texans were a surprise. The Texans were a surprise. Jacksonville was supposed to win the AFC South. But then Chiefs won in the West. Yeah, we knew that was happening. And then with uh, what other what what am I missing here? The AFC East Bills winning the AFC East, a second team getting in from the AFC East, whether it was the D Jets or the Dolphins. Obviously, the Jets losing Aaron Rodgers affected their season. But yeah, I think the AFC for the most part made sense. The big surprise was Texans making it over Jacksonville. NFC though, there, there were some upsets there. Packers getting in. I thought Packers would be good just because they have a good culture. They got a good organization just like us. But Jordan Love did surprise me. I do got to give the dude props. He ended up with like a top 10 quarterback season. No one expected the Rams, though. Everyone thought they were tanking. I thought they were going to be selling the house at some point mid midway through the season. That's why we were talking about Aaron Donald trade rumors to Pittsburgh. Have him come home. But yeah, they exceeded my expectations. Lions winning the NFC North. I, could, I, I think most of us felt like that was going to happen. They were the favorite. Vikings were going to compete, but then they lose Kirk Cousins. Cowboys winning the NFC East. I don't think anyone was expecting that. 49ers being the one seed, not big of a surprise. Buccaneers winning the South. That's another surprise. That's why I think the NFC was more of a, a shocking playoff picture compared to the AFC. Like, I don't think anyone was expecting the Buccaneers. Most had Saints, maybe Falcons, but... Buccaneers, after losing Tom Brady and having Baker Mayfield come in there, give them props. But also, no one expected the Eagles to fall flat on their face like they have over the last five or six weeks. So, yeah, NFC, a little bit more surprising of a bracket. AFC, not as much. But, yeah, the Texans making it over to the Jaguars was the, uh, the big surprise over on the AFC side. But uh, let me get into, I guess, just a little bit of this Steelers-Bills game. We got the weather going to be like in the 20s, mid-20s. Some winds, 15 to 20, 25 miles per hour. 
yeah, I mean, we were going to be dealing with that anyway if the game was at home here or even worse over in Kansas City. I think it was. it's going to be like down in the zeros over there. It's going to be down in like the single digits. So, yeah, that's what you can expect in the winter time, particularly up in Buffalo. Nothing crazy there. One o'clock game. I like that time slot more than the other option. The KC game would have been Saturday night at 8 o'clock. I must be getting old if I'm preferring the 1 o'clock time slot on a Sunday versus the Saturday night time slot. And I like night football games, but maybe it's something about the Saturday games that it's like the first. I, I like Steeler games, having more anticipation, playing the waiting game, knowing that, all right, cool, we're watching some football right now, but the big game, the main game, the one that I'm most excited about is still to come. So at least we have a little bit more waiting time. Because if it's a Sunday night game, I'd probably prefer a Sunday night time slot over a Sunday day time slot. But they don't even do that for the playoff. Wait, do they? Yeah, they will have a Sunday night slot. They will. I got I got some of my uh, games mixed up there. Yeah, because they'll have three Sunday games, right? One, four, late. And then they got two on Saturday, one on Monday night. Yeah, I, I would have preferred one of the later Sunday night slots over the one o'clock but the one o'clock sunday over the saturday if that makes sense I, I, maybe it's something about the saturday night game maybe that's what it is i'm not too old yet because I, I wouldn't mind the sunday night game would not mind that at all uh but tj watt as i said i'm gonna be interested if he plays or not i really am it's a do or die game single elimination single elimination game it's TJ Watt. I could see him get himself out there. Even if it's not at full strength, even if it's at 50, 60%, he's in a rotation with Herbig and Marcus Golden. JJ Watt said it was best case scenario for TJ. Grade two MCL sprain. Everything looks pristine. Couple of weeks of rest and recovery. They said if it was a grade one tear, it would have been a much better chance for TJ to play. You just put a brace on it, and he could have been out there. Obviously not at 100%, but grade two, as you're seeing here, a couple weeks. This is better news than what could have happened. Could have been out for the playoffs. Could have been an ACL where he's not only out for the playoffs, but he's rehabbing all through the offseason and might be missing some of 2024. So this isn't the worst news. Like JJ said, this is maybe the best news. A better better news would be grade one MCL sprain, and he'd be able to play this week. But speaking of TJ, I gotta say this. And I already met this. Well, let me let me get on with the injuries real quick. Minka and Casey. Minka, he's been banged up these last three weeks, been out. He's definitely gonna be playing. He promised that he'll be out there. So that's a huge boost. We lose one of our star players on defense. We get one back. Not the trade-off that we wanted, but is what it is, man. Is what it is. And then Casey coming back after that season-long suspension, after that egregious suspension that the NFL handed him, that's only going to help our secondary. And we might even be getting Trenton Thompson back, one of the unsung guys from our practice squad that has stepped up throughout the season. So that's that for like injuries and like what the roster should shake out to be because we're good on offense, healthy on the O line, uh, receivers fine, Najee, Jalen Warren, running backs, defense. Outside of what I just mentioned, I mean D lines intact with Cam Hayward, Keanu Benton, Ogan Joby, High Smith, two linebackers, two starting linebackers should be Landon Roberts, Miles Jack, and then at the cornerback spot, JPJ. Pat P, even though he's been playing some safety recently. Uh, Levi Wallace, Eric Rowe's been balling out. You know, he's going to be getting snaps out there. Like, just because Mink and Casey are coming back, I don't think that means you take Eric Rowe out. But, yeah, we're getting healthy, for the most part, at the right time. Outside of losing our best player on defense, TJ Watt. That's, again, the bummer. That's the buzzkill to all this. He might play, man. He might play. I just I got this gut feeling he's going to be out there. But speaking of TJ, we we gotta we gotta touch on this again. We gotta get back to this because it's official. After the Sunday games ended, TJ Watt has led the league in sacks for the third time, which is an NFL record. TJ Watt is the only player in NFL history to lead the NFL in three different seasons in sacks. 
So there's that. But what's crazy is I go on Twitter this morning, and what do you know? For the Defensive Player of the Year award odds, they still have Miles Garrett as the favorite. Now they bump Micah Parsons down to the third spot. TJ Watt is bumped up to the second. He's at like plus 200. But Miles Garrett they have is minus 200. Make it make sense. Someone please make it make sense. Look, I got the stats right next to the NFL on CBS graphic here. Make it make sense. It's every single category. What category does Miles Garrett have better than TJ Watt? What stat does Miles Garrett have better than TJ Watt right now? I don't see it. Less tackles. Less tackles for loss. Five less sacks. That's a significant amount, right? That's a significant difference. It's not like TJ's got 19, Miles Garrett's got like 17 or 18. No, that's five. That's a five sack difference. TJ Watt forced fumbles. Okay. He tied with Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett was able to tie TJ Watt on forced fumbles. But TJ Watt, better knack for the ball with three fumble recoveries to only one Miles Garrett fumble recovery. TJ with one pick. Miles Garrett, no picks. TJ Watt, eight passes defensed. Miles Garrett, three. 36 QB hits for TJ. 30 QB hits for Miles. TJ, touch pay dirt. Miles Garrett did not. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I mean, those are just odds that we're seeing right now. Miles Garrett is just favored in the betting odds. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to win the award, but I'm just completely shocked by that. It, it does not make sense to me at all. I don't think it makes sense to any of you guys either, right? It does not add up. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, what else we got to cover? What do you, what do you guys got in the chat? Cause talked a little bit about Steelers bills game. I just like how we're playing. We could beat any team like specifically versus the bills. They got a banged up defense. You could run on them. You could pass on them. Like they've been playing, they've been playing good. Like they've been piecing it together over these last few weeks throughout their winning streak. But there's no reason we can't run the ball. We can't have success. We can't move it. We can't move the chains. We can't put a point. There's no reason for that. And then our defense versus the Bills offense, Josh Allen's the X factor. If he's out there making plays, it makes it tougher on us. But he also turns the ball over, too. He also makes some stupid mistakes. And we are one of the top teams in the league in turnover. So I, I like that for us, man. I, I really do. I, I like this matchup. I think it's a good matchup. I'm not disrespecting the Bills or anything, but at the same time, like, there's nothing to fear with them. No, not at all. Uh, let me get this off the screen. Let me read some of the chat, and then uh, we'll get out of here, man. NSMC99 is in the house. Says, what's up, Deke? Says, I didn't expect the Titans to win yesterday, but I'm glad they did. We needed them to win because we ended up seeing the result of that Sunday night game. The Bills beat the Dolphins. You, you can't... It's crazy because we're relying on Ryan Tannehill to get the job done for us. And, like, you don't want to be relying on him for your playoff hopes. But I don't want to be relying on Tua either. So it's a good thing we got that one out of the way. T. Williams, 4-2-1. Do we go back to Najee, RB1, or do you keep the 50-50-ish Thunder and Lightning Tanner? I'm a Warren guy, but Najee proven why he's RB1 last game or two. I think you stick with what we got going right now because Jalen Warren's been putting the ball on the ground. Najee has, e even though I've been calling for the 50-50, at least the 50-50 combo with Jalen and Najee, where you at least got to give Warren the same amount of steps or the same amount of touches as Najee. We haven't been doing that. Najee Harris has still been getting more carries, just very consistently throughout the course of the year. Even though sometimes Jalen's numbers would be better, he'd be getting more yards per carry. We're given... Najee Harris the ball more. I, you could probably look. It's it's got to be close to every single game we've given the ball. Najee, we've given the ball to Najee more than Jalen, specifically in handoffs. Now, if you want to add some of the passes that Jalen will catch out the back for feel, maybe it's a little closer. But for the most, I think we've been giving Najee most of the carries. Whenever you compare it to Jalen, he's always been getting the upper hand. I think you stick with it. Yeah, it's working out. I was wrong about that. 
Uh, C Miller 61. If we beat the Bills, Tomlin has a real, real coach of the year case with all of our struggles. He for sure does. I'll be, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll be interested to see who gets coached. Who's who else got a case? I guess Dan Campbell. Um, and that's the other thing too. It's hard to say the playoffs don't factor into the awards votings because yeah, if you if you do beat the Bills, you go on a little bit of a playoff run. How do you unsee that? Whenever you're talking about voting and giving away the coach of the year, for sure. Square says Gabe Davis killed us last time. Right now he's banged up, so I don't know if he's going to be good to go. And if he does go, if he's going to be limited, if he's going to be compromised. NSMC99, back to the TJ Watt Miles Garrett thing. He says the argument for Miles Garrett is always he's a better pass rush win rate. Or you could probably PFF grade too, but I didn't know we gave out depoys for pass rush win rate and PFF grades. He says, in my opinion, it doesn't matter if you win the pass rush if you don't finish with a sack or a tackle for loss, right? Justin Stat Justin Tass says, feels like a big George Pickens game this weekend. Shout out to Pickens too. Didn't have any production in that Ravens game, but we haven't heard a peep from him. About complaining, bad body language, being a diva. Shout out to him, man. The Mason effect, guys. I'm telling you. The Mason effect. <laughs> Mason's done wonders for this team. We're playing better, man. And I don't think it's coincidence. It's because two is playing some solid ball out there. Doing what he's got to do as the quarterback, as the leader. So is there any debate he's he should be starting the playoffs. I was going to talk about that a little bit this stream, but I don't know if there's uh, much of a reason for it. He needs to be starting. No question about it. He's the hot hand. He gives us the best chance to win right now. I think he's best for this team. The offense has performed the best with him at the helm. Not writing off Kenny. Not saying Kenny can't be the guy in 2024, compete for the job in 2024, or even be the franchise guy. But right now it's Mason Rudolph. The mentality is, going back to what I said at the beginning, game at a time. we got to win this next game. That's all of our focus. 